Here we go with about take six of trying to get the document camera to record the answer to question four on exam three of spring 2020 chem 230. All right, so this question asks about conformational isomers of trans, one propyl, four isopropyl, cyclohexane, and the first thing we have to do is make sure we get the right constitutional and geometric isomer. So the way I do that is to draw a nice chair for the cyclohexane, pick a carbon to be number one, and then throw a purple group on it. And this one's a little bit interesting compared to the ones we did in lecture, because rather than having a disubstituted cyclohexane with two substituents that are exactly the same, like one for dimethyl, now one of our substituents is a propyl, and one's an isopropyl. So getting those right from the common names of the different substituent groups is one of the interesting things here. But if we just start on carbon number one, we have just a regular old propyl, and if we want to start with a higher energy conformer, we could put this in the axial position on the first carbon. So here's a propyl group, one, two, three carbons, and since it's a regular old propyl, all three carbons are in a row from the point of connection. So there's your propyl group on the first carbon in a high energy, sterically hindered axial position. And then if we go two, three, four to the fourth carbon, that's where we're gonna wanna put the isopropyl. And we might say, oh, if we want high energy, we have to put this in an axial position, but we're not gonna have a choice as to whether to put it in axial or equatorial because the trans says that the new group has to be on the opposite side of the ring as the old group. And this one actually works out in our favor if we wanted a high energy conformer because on the fourth carbon, the position below the ring is axial. So as we went around, this guy would be axial above the ring, axials below the ring, axials above the ring, axials below the ring. So when we do trans one four substitution pattern, we end up with two substituents, both in the axial position. And that makes this the very high energy conformer because the large groups are in the axial positions. And those are more crowded. The equatorial positions have lots of space because they're pointing away from the other atoms. Now, if we did a conformational change, the chair, boat, chair, interconversion, what's the head of this chair would become the foot of the new chair. What's the foot of this chair would become the head of the new chair. So it sort of reverses the direction of the chair. If you were to get a model set and work this out, it becomes somewhat clear. Things on the top of the ring stay on top of the ring, but the axial position now turns into an equatorial position. So this propyl group is still gonna be on top of the ring, but it's now gonna be in an equatorial position just a little bit above the ring. And then in the number four position, this is still going to be below the ring, our isopropyl group, but now it's going to mostly be pointing out to the side in an equatorial position. So that would make this a much lower energy conformer or conformational isomer if you wanted to use sort of the fuller name for this, the lower energy conformational isomer because the large groups are in the spacious or roomy equatorial positions. So there we go with question four.